Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Malin Havefjell and in this video we will talk about the different booking periods that you can choose from when you run a company in Sweden. So this is a video in a series where I walk you through the different kind of tax things, the booking things, all these kind of questions that you might have when you run a company in Sweden. Uh, I used to work at the tax agency here in Sweden, but now I have started this channel and uh, my own business where I help people that wants to start up and are in the startup and running a small business here in Sweden. And I will gladly help you too, uh, even if my English isn't the best Maybe your English isn't the best either, but maybe the English is better than your Swedish. I don't know. Well, regardless, I guess that you are really good at what you want to sell to people and what you want to run your business uh, in, what kind of area you are running your business, the service or the product you're selling. Well, all that I would love to hear from you and what your dreams are. But to help you, uh, reach your dreams and f your goals in life and with your business, you need to know some things about the different tax rules and the bookkeeping rules when you run a company here in Sweden. So I'm here to help you with that. And in this video, we will talk about the different booking periods. And this is one thing that you chose to cho when you registered your company uh, or when you are about to register a company, you will get this question. So hopefully you in this video will know more what you want to uh, register for your company. Uh, if you want even more information about the registration process uh, when you're starting up a company in Sweden, uh, I have a seminar that you can watch and that one you will find when you, if you go to my website, www.havefjall.se. So this video is actually a part of the bigger seminar uh, where we go step by step through the registration process. But enough with that one. Booking periods. What? How many are there? Well, we have three. We have annual that you book in a period that we see like a year and we have quarterly that's three months each and monthly every month uh, okay so what does this mean well this has to do with the VAT the VAT tax return when you are supposed to file your VAT tax return so actually you need to do the booking well every month well you need to put all these papers together and, and uh, calculate it all together when you actually have done something. But when you are going to file your VAT tax return, VAT return, I guess it's value added tax return, that depends on what kind of booking period you have chose to, chosen when you registered your company. So we have all these different annual, quarter and monthly. Okay. What should I choose? How do I know which one is the best for me? Well, it's up to you, of course. Uh, if you are running a small company, you can choose between all these three. So, my suggestions. Annual. If you're running your business more like a hobby, uh, it's, uh, so to say, a small business that you have beside your main income, then maybe annual is better for you because, okay, of course, there's less administration work for you. The negative part with annual period I see a lot when I talk to uh, uh, business owners is that if you file your VAT once a year only then it's, it's easy to lose papers, forget things and well you, you don't sort of do your bookkeeping even if you have to it's easier to just ah, I do it later. So if you just have a very small business, uh, it's more like a hobby, you have your main income from another, like you are employed, uh, you have, uh, you are employed by somebody, then maybe annual is best for, 
is good for you. But if your, your plan is to, well, I want to earn more money from my business, then I suggest that you choose between the other two. So if you want to choose the quarter, that's every third month, you want, need to file your VAT. Uh, so like January, February, March, then you file your VAT the second month after that. So January, February, March, April, May. So the 12th of May, you need to file what you have bought and sold during the first uh, quarter of the year. Uh, and then it goes right that, like that during the year. So if you have a startup company, you're not, you're not uh, up and running like a, a big company and you're more like a small business, maybe this is good for you because you only need to do this administration work every third month. Uh, but keep in mind that if you are buying lots of things for your company, you need to also wait to get the VAT back. Uh, because when you buy things for your company that is VAT registered, you also get VAT back. Uh, so you pay the VAT for your customers to the tax agency, but you also get back the VAT you paid to your suppliers. And you get that back when you file your VAT return. So if you're in the startup and you need, well, money, you need cash, you need liquidity in your company, maybe it's better for you to choose the month uh, um, to file your VAT monthly. Uh, and if you are up and running and you, you have this big business going on, my experience is that it is good to have this, well, it's, it happens every month. You pay your invoices for your personal uh, life also every month. I would say it's, it's good to, uh, to do all, the th all these things monthly because then it will be done. <laughs> uh, I know lots of people think, okay, oh, but that's so much administrative work. Well, yes, but it is the same amount even if you do it quarterly. And if you do it quarterly, well, it pi 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 piles up, be a bigger pile than if you do it monthly. So uh, my suggestion is maybe if you're your plan is to have your business as a main income register monthly for your uh, VAT because then it will sort of force you to do the bookkeeping. Uh, it's, I know, we are people, uh, a lot of people are, how should I say, a little lazy. We want to, uh, we want to do the fun part. We want to do the things that we enjoy. My guess is that you are not starting your company, you're not running your company because you think the bookkeeping is the most fun part of it. So then it will be more easy to like, well, I do the bookkeeping later. And then if you do it every third month or annually, it, the pile with all the work that you don't like will be like a mountain for you. So it will give you more stress and maybe perhaps anxiety too. So if you just eat that big mountain in small pieces instead every month, then it will not be this stress thing because you will have, it, it will be something you do every month. Well, I pay my personal, I, I pay the rent to my house. Well, you do every, lots of things every month. So my suggestion is, at least think of it to do it every month. Uh, so, what do I do now? Except listening to my dogs that has started to bark <laughs> beside me now. Uh, well, now decide what you want to do and, and think of 
how am I as a person? What do I need? Like, do I am I a control person or am I more manana manana person? Well, the manana person person maybe needs to have the book period booking period every month because then it will be done. <laughs> the control person maybe also also want to have it every month because then I know if you do it every month then you have a bookkeeping that is correct and up to date. Uh, of course you can choose the others as well. Uh, this is my opinion and my experience of uh, talking with a lot of business owner. Uh, so uh, depending on your company and depending on uh, how you want to run your company, I would suggest diff different things. But if your plan is to have your company as your main income, I truly uh, <laughs> want to, uh, uh, yeah, well, monthly is what my experience says is the best thing then. Uh, if you're just on a startup, you are, um, uh, you're not even sure, right? Uh, now, if you are gonna do this as your main income or not, well, maybe then you don't want to have the administrative work every month. And it depends also on how much you do in your business. Uh, I would be glad to have this conversation with you so we can talk and I can ask you questions. Um, how you running your company, how what your dreams are, what you are, what kind of person you are, because all this depends on at the end how you are as a person and what your dream is, uh, what your dream are, uh, and, and and to be able to do that, we need to have contact, of course. Uh, so please contact me and book a meeting. You can do that by. Uh, writing me an email by uh, at foretagshjälpen at havefjall.se and you can also find this information if you go to my website www.havefjall.se and there you can also find this seminar uh, about how to register your company in Sweden like a step-by-step -step guide uh, where we go through all these different kind of questions. So. This video is only one part of that bigger seminar, so please visit my website and take a look at that one as well. Uh, and if you like this video, please press the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can continue doing these videos for free as well. Uh, and uh, I hope to hear from you and uh, good luck with your company. Bye bye.